Hi, this is Denise from Foursquare Micro Farm. Okay, what you ideally should be looking at is my craft table, but you're not. It's buried. What you are looking at is a bag of raw thin wool. And this particular video is going to be about how long it actually takes to finish a project. And based on the amount of time it takes, how much things cost. A lot of times when you ask people how to price handmade items, if you are selling anything, they tell you, uh, take the formula for how much you paid for your materials, uh, multiply that by how much time it takes you, and then multiply it by something and then you get the cost. So then you see them asking like $30 for handmade gloves. And um, people are, well, I've had people say, well, that's too much. Except that you know, that formula is like the worst formula ever because sometimes I get wool for free. I get wool for trades. I get wool for almost nothing because I'm working with raw wool and I work with almost anything. So my costs are not always the same for everybody. And if I was just to do something about cost and materials, that would be really low and that would drive down the market. So it's not really a good idea. You can't really think about that. That. And then some people are, are in different steps where I'm processing the raw wool. Some people are just spinning from roving. It's already processed. Some people are just using regular yarn. And so if you look at the time it takes, it's going to take me longer than it would someone who's using roving or just yarn. So that's not really kind of fair either. And then two, if I did price stuff according to how long it took me through this entire process, <laughs> like nobody would be able to afford that. So I'm actually going to walk you through the pro the process and the time it takes in order for me to make something. So what I'm going to do is as I'm prepping the wool, spinning the wool, uh, knitting the pattern and dyeing, wherever I'm doing a finish it, I'm going to time myself so that you have a realistic view about how much time it actually takes. So I'm starting off with the fin. I, I was going to do mittens, but uh, there's a pattern I really like called Eight Godmothers on Revelry. And now it's been archived, so you have to get it as a PDF from the web archive. And I've decided I'm going to do that one instead. Now on the pattern, it says 250 yards of DK weight, but I've made it several times. And I've never used 250 yards, but I'm still going to spin roughly uh, that amount of fiber because I'll probably wind up making a matching pair of mitts later on. So I'm just going to go ahead and start it. I'm going to process enough fiber for it and keep my time and calculations. And I will update you as I move from step to step.
So the actual knitting time is now complete. Um, the knitting time was four hours, 20 minutes and 55 seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and wash this or what we call finishing. Of course, I'm going to weave in the ends and I'm going to block it out. And once that's done, I'll go ahead and give you the total of the entire time that it took to make this. So I've heard it said that it's not finished till it's wet finished. And I believe that is totally true. Now I'm not blocking it traditionally. So I guess when I say I don't block things, I'm probably talking about socks or gloves. I just put them away. Uh, but I do wet finish my items, wash them, and I stretch out the points and I hang them a certain way. Um, only really fine lace things do I put the pins on, but I don't make a lot of those. Uh, so what I did here is I'm just stretching out the points, kind of arranging them the way I want them. And then I'm going to roll it and squeeze out the excess water and let it dry that way. Then you'll have a really good idea of what it looks like now. Here is the finished product. Um, I probably should put it on so you can get a better idea of what it looks like. But it just comes to about the shoulders. And I 
probably say right about the breastbone. Um, at some point, I'll take a picture with somebody on it, but it's just me right now, so I can't really do that. Okay, so anyway, here it is finished. And one of the reasons that it's gray and um, off-white is because I added Angora to it. And that's what's giving it the shading. Otherwise, it would just be the off-white fin color. And that's just to give it a little something extra. And the fin is a long wool shit halo. And of course, the Angora is going to halo, so it's going to have a pretty nice halo. Okay, so anyway, let's look at the breakdown here. So this is the eight godmothers, and in this case, it was a free Ravelry pattern, so I'm not adding the price of the pattern on there. I also didn't add the washing time because I washed this bunch uh, some time ago, even before the weaving video. So I'm not even sure how long it took, but it takes a while to wash, depending on what you're doing. And I didn't do any dyeing, and I'm not going to, so I'm not adding that either. That would be um, a different price bracket as far as time and um, materials. So I have a breakdown for that too. So at any rate, took me an hour and 35 minutes to card, 35 minutes um, to blend it, about two hours and three minutes, 30 seconds to spin, and to knit about four hours and 20 minutes. And uh, total was eight hours, 57 minutes, five seconds. And I probably could add on a few minutes or two because there are times when I was knitting and forgot to turn on the stopwatch. Hmm. So it's a little more than that. But you could see that if I was like sitting down a day um, for a nine hour, 10 hour day, maybe <laughs> I could probably do one of these a day. Uh, that still is a lot. Okay. So at any rate, um, if I was to use the minimum wage for Ohio, roughly eight hours, eight dollars uh, an hour, and that was just minimum wage, not even treating myself like a craftsperson, just treating myself minimum wage, we're talking seventy-two dollars just for labor. Okay, so we look at materials, and that was about three ounces of fiber. Um, and you know, I didn't calculate the yardage I meant to, but I forgot. And a lot of times I don't do by yardage. Um, I just don't. Because uh, I don't even count the yardage on my skeins. I just spin up what I need and then use it. Okay, now, I usually calculate by weight. Um, it's about 2.5 ounces of fin. And if you're looking at fin being $2 an ounce, this is going rate right. depends on how long it is. Sometimes it's more. And uh, Angora at half an ounce, so if it's $10 an ounce, half an ounce is about $5. What I can tell you is that when I was looking at material pricing, it's all about the same. Um, when you look at roving and you break down it per ounce, it's about $2 per ounce. Raw fiber, it's it can be about $2 per ounce depending on how you're getting it. Uh, and what you're doing is you're not really calculating how much you got it for. You're calculating fair market value. So let's say that I got the fin for free or I got a lot of fin wool raw processed for free. I'm, I'm counting in the market value of this item. Okay, so uh, altogether, just using minimum wage, um, the minimum price of market for materials. I'm already at $81. There's no markup there for anything. And you could already see where the price would be if I charged what it actually took. Honest actually took to make the items. Okay, now if I was to put this in my Etsy shop, I probably would not sell it for $81. And I'm not even sure I have the audience where I could sell it for $81. So when people ask me, why don't I sell out of my handmade because um what i do is pretty labor intensive so mm. all right now so let's say that i did no processing that i just bought roving okay because i've had people say that well you could bring your prices down if you didn't do all that labor yes i could but let's see how much so we just got the spinning time here and then the knitting time and uh, i rounded that up to about a half an hour so half of an hour, 0.5. I did the math for that. It's about $52 just with the labor. Now, like I said, when I did the pressing with the roving, uh, fair market value still works about the same. So I added the same 
9.5 there and you get about $61. So still we're, I'm asking $60 for a, um, little neck scarf. So depending on the market, that still is quite a bit for a small handmade item. Depends on how you feel. Though I know there is market for that sort of thing if you have it. Okay, so no roving. Just go buy the yarn. Okay, so I'm going to um, my local yarn shop if I have one. Or I'm going to um, Michael's or Joann's or whatever. And I'm getting the Fisherman's Wool or something like that. Uh, neither one of those stores carries very much real wool. And I would want real wool. And so probably the price for a skein of real wool at like Jones and Michaels is probably like somewhere between seven to ten dollars, maybe, maybe more. I'm not really sure. I've never actually bought fisherman's wool. I don't really buy yarn from Joann's or Michaels. And I've never really bought anything besides sock yarn from a local yarn store. So I can't even tell you um the going prices of buying some type of um wool. I'm I've always been a spinner. So I went straight from buying like cheap acrylic to spinning my yarn. So I was never like in between the local yarn store kind of knitter type person. So I'm really not sure. Um, and you know what? I wish I had a knit picks catalog in front of me. But at any rate, you can insert that. So I just said about 10 bucks, right? And still, like I said, from the the $9 here, $10 here to $10 is still about $10 for materials, especially because this particular pattern doesn't take up that much yarn. I, from a, a standard skein, I could uh, make it quite a few of these because this by itself is probably, it's a little less than two ounces and it's completely dry. And so I, I have out of the three or so ounces I spun, I still have enough to make a second one. So I can make several of these when you do the breakdown. So at any rate, but if I'm not doing the breakdown, I'm just kind of doing it that way. So without any roving, just yarn, I would have about $35, just pure labor. And of course, if I was making acrylic, um, then I would still probably, I would wind up about at this price, you know. So like I said, this breakdown is just no markup. It's just completely uh, just calculating labor. It's barely calculating materials. So if I was to use that formula of uh, time and materials times whatever, you could see how the price of this handmade stuff would be uh, a lot. So when people ask you, um, is it cheaper to do handmade? Ha, no, it's not. Or when they ask you, when they say things like, I could buy that at Walmart. Uh, no, you could not, which is why I made it because I couldn't get what I wanted at Walmart. So I made it and the time it takes and well, quality, in my case, the quality of materials, since I am using, um, local sourced um, chemical free, you know, this is all hand washed, you know, uh, stuff like that. Uh, you just can't really get that quality. And I be honest, when I think about the stuff that's made and sold at Walmart, it just kind of boggles my mind that they, uh, the wages that they're paying those people to make some of that stuff, because even if you're machine knitting, that still is it's still pretty labor intensive to make anything. And then you can get it at Walmart for 20 bucks. So if you're getting it like that, that cheap, you, you can imagine how much they're actually paying for it. And what that person who is putting it together, making it or whatever is, is getting paid. Okay. So I don't want to get political. I'm just, I'm just saying that, uh, consider that when you, buy items or sell items. Okay. Sorry. Stopping there. All right. Thanks a lot, everybody. I hope this was, um, eye opening or informational. And I think this is probably a video that you should share and pass along with your friends. 
especially sharing with people who um, don't think handmade should cost that much. <laughs> Definitely share this with them. In the meantime, I think I might add some um, thrum, some thrum fiber up here or something like that. I'm definitely going to put a button on it. And you never know, this might actually appear in my Etsy shop. Okay, thanks for watching. Um, subscribe if you are not a subscriber. If you are a subscriber, thank you for watching. And if you could do me a favor and click the thumbs up button, the thumbs up for the Facebook algorithm is just as important as the views are so it helps me a lot and it really helps me to be a better vlogger i'm working really hard for that and if you have any questions um, or comments go ahead and put those down in the comments section i love talking to everybody out there thanks a lot have a great day